it's just more and more distressing. I come out into the garden and I look this way and I think there's nobody there. And I look that way and I think, and there's nobody there. And then I think, I look in the house and I think, I can't see my grandchildren. And, uh, and normally there's a whole, there's a whole flow of eccentric, unusual, sometimes dodgy people coming into the house. And of course, nobody's supposed to come through the threshold. I'm in the very extraordinary situation of being a married Catholic priest. I have two grown daughters and my grandchildren who were just here, but we've been in the heart of this blessed lockdown. And this is the first time I've really seen the grandchildren. The most distressing thing is to go into the church, which is what we'll do in a few moments, and try to celebrate the Mass and look at all the empty pews and all the empty benches and just think, it's three months. I mean, this has never happened before in the history of the church, let alone the history of this church. My mother, God bless her, always objected that I was a rebel, but I don't think I am a rebel because in any case, I came from the Church of England to join the most apparently the most conservative form of Christianity that there is. Catholicism is all-embracing. That's what Catholicism means. It doesn't mean rigidly narrow, conservative, exclusive. Catholicism means there's a place for everybody, okay? And I'm sorry I haven't put my collar on today. I've forgotten to get dressed up, but I've got my Jethro Tull t-shirt on. I've just been messing about in the garden today and you've turned up. So this is, you get it as it is. That's it. Come in. Yeah, so you're, you're in the, the sacristy, the back room now. I'm proud of this because this room was very dilapidated. I use this as a, especially the last three months, I've been using this back room as a workshop for projects and for construction for creating little creative things. It, come in. So now we're in the church. Oh. Of Our Lady Star of the Sea. My primary role as a priest is to gather the people together and to do what Christ asked us to do. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and to literally make Christ present among the people so that the people themselves can make Christ present in the world today. Secondary to that, but of course integral to that, is to care for the people, to preach the gospel, to reach out to the community and society all around us, but to be a pastor and a shepherd and to, and to care for the people. And it just is such a... Because even... Even in normality, on weekdays, I leave the doors of the church open and invariably there's always somebody in the church, a tourist, some little soul passing by, someone who's got a broken heart or whose mum has died or who's having a bad time for whatever reason. I, invariably, I leave the church open and I wander, I come and go and I'll find some little soul who just needs a kindly thought, a kindly word. So a lot of the ministry happens here. Um, and to look round and see, and see the church, and to see the door locked shut, that breaks my heart. And to see all the benches empty. And no happy smiling faces, or not even any frowning faces because I've got my t-shirt on today. And they're thinking, why is he looking like that? in this church. <laughs> I have done more funerals than normal. I have sadly had to conduct some funerals which have been related to the virus, either directly or indirectly. Very sadly, there's a lovely woman, uh, her mother had contracted the virus in a nursing home. Meanwhile, her husband contracted the virus and they both died. So that has been a principal tragedy. Um, and then other families who have lost husbands and wives and loved ones in the normal process of life, 
but then we've been prevented from having any kind of funeral ceremony in the church, no requiem. I mean, the, in the early stages, I had to do a funeral with just five people present. So that's very damaging. I mean, we don't know, we really don't know the long lasting psychological effects and the repercussions that are going to be affected in people's mental well being, especially in the Catholic tradition the state has no right to interfere with the life of the church. But of course the church has an integral responsibility um, to do what's best for the people and for the nation. And, and the simple reality is, is if this is the only way to contain the virus and to bring the virus under control, of course the church will be the first to cooperate with that. And, and we all understand that and we all, uh, and, and we all um, endorse that but as time is going by i mean i've just come up crooms hill and i've looked across the park and greenwich park looks like brighton beach and there are so many crowds in greenwich park i couldn't believe it coming up the hill and yet here am i and i have to keep the doors of this place slammed shut the point at when i begin to feel that the state is intruding on the rights of the church and it's I don't want to say it's difficult for the church to cooperate because the church will always have a sense of personal responsibility and a desire to conform, you know, to laws which are made for the well-being and the benefit of the people. But we all went willingly into this lockdown, but nobody's giving us a route map for the way out. And the church is going to be carried with it sometime after the event. It's difficult for me to speak about that. Um, yeah.